All right, welcome back. This is my fourth example on the principle of mathematical induction. Here's my email at the bottom if you have any questions or comments. Okay, so this is the problem. It says, show by PMI that 6 divides 19n minus 13n for n greater or equal to 1. So you should be able to see right, right away that PN is 19n minus 13n. This is the statement, this is the proposition that we have to prove is true. So the first step is to verify, right? So we're going to verify that 6 divides 19n minus 13n for n and we just pick any integer we want to test. It could be 3, 4, 5, whatever you want but obviously the easiest is 1. So we're going to take 1, it's within the restriction and we're going to see if it works. So p of 1 is 19 to the power of 1 minus 13 to the power of 1 which is 19 minus 13 which is equal to 6. And 6 can obviously be divided by 6 to give you 1. So this is true. No problem there. We're going to move on to the next step, which because of the first step we can assume that 6 divides 19 or PK for k greater or equal to 1, where pk is 19k minus 13k. Now you might have noticed, I don't know if this is confusing or have people wondering, but here I wrote the statement, but the statement is pn, and here I wrote pk, but the pk is 19k minus 13k. So it doesn't matter which one you write, as long as you write 1 but I just write PKPN because it's shorter usually. Alright, so let's continue. So we assume this and now the last step is to prove because we assume this for every integer but we have to prove that 6 and I'm going to use this divides PK plus the integer after that for K greater or equal to 1 and PK plus 1 is 19k plus 1 minus 13k plus 1. Okay, so you might have noticed that this is a bit similar to our last problem where we had xk plus 1 minus yk plus 1. So if you watched the last video, we are going to continue in the same way actually. So I'm not going to explain it again. You should be able to follow this, but because there's a plus 1 here, plus 1 there, we can actually do 19 times 19k minus 13 times shoot I didn't want to put that double dot just ignore it that's times we'll do parentheses or something times 13k okay so now remember you want to factor this from this so this is very similar to the last problem because we cannot currently factor this out of this so again, by al algebraic freedom, we have to add a number and subtract a, add and subtract a term from this expression so that we can factor pk. Um, if you want, pause the video right now, take a second to think about it, see if you can figure it out. But I'm going to continue and just give you guys the answer. And in fact, you have to add 19 times 13k and subtract 19 times 13k. Alright, so this is what's going to allow you to factor out your pk. Okay, so you're going to take out all these 19s. So we have 19 times 19k, and then we're going to take this one and take out that minus 13k and right here you can see that we have pk and let's see what else we got so then we're going to take out 13k and we're going to get 19 from here 
and we're going to get minus 13 from there. Okay, so if you remember from the last video, because we have this pk, we know this is divisible by 6 because we assumed it in our part 2 here, the step 2, this, the assumption part. So we know this is divisible by 6. But what about this part right here? Well, if we just develop it just a bit more, or simplify it, whatever you want to call that. Okay, so this we're not even going to bother with. We already know. Divisible by 6. But here we have 13k. But if you just do 19 minus 13, well, you got 6. So obviously, any number times 6, if you just divide it by 6, is going to give you an integer. So this is by logic, like clearly it's divisible by 6. So this kind of combines our third, our second and third question I did, where I believe the second one you had to find divisible by 3, and the last one you had to find a factor. So here you kind of find that factor pk, and then here you see it's divisible by 6, so we kind of have both of them put into one. And this is kind of what I was talking about, where if you find pk, in your pk plus 1, the second part of your expression just kind of falls together. See, it just it naturally gave us the 6, and because 6 is what we're looking for, divis divide 6, it works. And we can now conclude by PMI that 6 divides pn for n greater or equal to 1. And that's it. So I can't stress enough how important it is to factor out pk from your pk plus 1. That's usually what it takes, especially if you had a, have a more difficult problem where it's not just making the left-hand side equal the right-hand side. Do whatever you can to make to factor out pk. And if you can't do it, add and subtract a factor that allows you to factor out pk. That that's the key. Alright, so I think I've done enough of these examples. I might post a few more, but they're going to get a lot more difficult, which is probably what people want, because I'm assuming you guys have a pretty good understanding of how it works, and you just need practice on examples, and you need solutions to show you how to do them. So I'll try to get those up soon, but thanks for watching. Bye.